In this video, we're going to learn a little bit more about the process of erosion and how erosional processes can actually reshape what Earth's surface of the Earth looks like. So to start, just to remind you, erosion is the transport or the removal of sediments that were broken down once from weathering. Weathering breaks down rock into smaller pieces. Erosion is taking those pieces that have been broken down and moving it from one place to another which is why in this picture we see a pickup truck transporting sediments. It's taking the sediments that were broken down and moving them elsewhere. Now, the driving force behind erosion is gravity. This means gravity is the reason why erosion occurs. A great example of this is in the image showing a landslide. Gravity takes down the rocks and the dirt along the hill slope and pulls them down. That's erosion. All of those rocks and dirt were transported from the mountain slope down to the road. Here's a little example showing you what uh, gravity and erosion could look like. Now a little humor into this, what happens is the rock got broken down due to weathering and erosion transported the rock from the top of the cliff down to the road. That's erosion, gravity took over, pulled the rock down, the sediments in the rock were transported from one place to another. Now there are these items called agents of erosion. An agent of erosion is anything that can transport sediment from one place to another. So the three common ones are water, wind, and glaciers. And if you look at the images, we have one of a waterfall. As the water is flowing down the waterfall, that water is moving really fast. It's going to be able to transport any rocks or sediments that are floating in the water. Also, when the wind blows, especially if you can imagine a baseball field full of dirt, as the wind blows, it picks up the dirt in the sand and it transports it around the field. So wind is also another way that you can transport sediments due to erosion. And also glaciers. Glaciers are large chunks of ice that can be found in mountainous areas where the climate is relatively cold. And you don't realize this, but glaciers are also moving. They move very slowly, but they are still moving and they bring rocks and different types of sediments with it as they move. So here's an animation just to show you how water can transport sediments. So as the stream is flowing, you're going to see that the different rocks and the sediments are also moving with the water. Some of them already drop off in the water, while some get carried a little bit further, and that really depends on the size of the sediment. But what you can see is as the water flows, it's also transporting the particles with it. That's exactly what erosion is. Now, the process of erosion can leave a lot of evidence behind that erosion occurred because erosion removes sediments from one place to another. So if you're looking at a place that experienced erosion, you might see a lot of holes or gaps in the land that shows that rock or sediments or pieces of dirt have been moved. Like you see in this picture here, along the middle you see lots, lots of cracks in the rocks, lots of missing pieces of land because erosion has taken place to remove that land and rock into another location. That's what we call reshaping the surface of the earth. The surface of the earth is constantly changing and you're never going to have a location look the same all the time because of erosion. Here's a really great picture of that. So this is showing a beach, and there was also a road that used to exist along that beach. Due to its proximity to the ocean, when you have really uh, strong storms, the waves from the ocean water can hit against the cliffs along the coast, which can cause erosion. And you can see that this road and cliffside has completely broken down because of that process of erosion. So this is another example of reshaping the surface of the earth. Here's an example of weathering and erosion at a cemetery. Some tombstones are made up of marble, which don't react very well to acid rain. And since we have pollution in our atmosphere, our rain is slightly acidic. And when it hits tombstones that are made of marble, it starts to chemically weather them. It breaks them down over time, changing the surface of the tombstone and what it looks like. 
Now, erosion from wind can take a really long time to have an effect, but if you go into a lot of desert areas where they have a lot of wind and sand, you can see some of these features. You have these rock statues almost that have been reshaped over time. So you can see that some of the rocks have holes in them and different pieces that are missing because as the wind blows and the sand hits those rocks, it starts to break it down, creating all these holes and gaps. So I want you to take a look at this animation to kind of show how you can go from a rock, maybe in the shape of a block, to something similar to the image you have on the right side, which looks like an arch of rocks. So over time, weathering and erosion breaks the rock down and can reshape it into something else, resulting in a very completely different structure than you had originally. That's again erosion reshaping the surface of the earth. Now these processes take a very long time. It doesn't go as quickly as it did within that animation. These can take hundreds to thousands of years to actually take place. Another piece of evidence of erosion can be seen in waterfalls. When you have a waterfall, which where you have all this water falling off of a cliff, that water is going to land somewhere. And when it lands onto a pile of rocks beneath it, that water has so much force, it's going to create something called a plunge pool. As that water hits the rocks below at such a strong force, it's going to break the rock down over time, creating a hole in the rock. So I want you to watch this animation to see how this process actually takes place. As the water is going off of the cliff to form that waterfall, all the rock at the bottom of the waterfall gets weaker because the water keeps hitting it, causing that plunge pool to form. Another piece of evidence of erosion reshaping the land, reshaping the rock within that environment. And then here's just some pictures. One on the left is a real picture showing how multiple waterfalls create all the plunge pools at the bottom of each one. And on the right, we just have a cartoon image showing the same process. As that water falls off the waterfall, it's going to break down the rock below it, removing that rock, resulting in erosion and a change in the landscape. 